name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. I'm seeing so many fa familiar faces, I think I'm still in Lourdes. <laughs> it's wonderful to see you all here, and thank you all very, very much for coming. And I hope you'll enjoy not the Mass first and foremost, and of course the celebrations after. If the, uh, well, if there's any, because I haven't seen anything. So they kept me locked up. <laughs> so it's just wonderful, and thank you. As you all know, I celebrate 50 years last Saturday. I was in Lourdes with my group and with the diocese, and we celebrated it. And now another celebration here, the important one. Thank you very, very much. Shall we begin our Mass in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. <laughs> to prepare ourselves now to celebrate these sacred mysteries, we ask the Lord to help us always to be as generous as we can to help and to support each other in every way possible. We will find in the readings, that's the theme of our readings, let us all pray and ask the Lord to help us and to forgive us for those times we fail. We say together, I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Gloria in excelsis Deo. Gloria, Gloria.
by no merit of my own chose me for communion with the eternal priesthood of your Christ and for the ministry of your church grant that I may be an ardent yet gentle preacher of the gospel and a faithful steward of your mysteries through our Lord Jesus Christ your son who lives in the reign with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit God forever and ever Amen A reading from the second book of the Kings. A man came from Baal Shalisha, bringing Elisha, the man of God, bread from the first fruits, 20 barley loaves and fresh grain in the ear. Give it to the people to eat, Elisha said. But his servant replied, How can I serve this to a hundred men? Give it to the people to eat, he insisted. For the Lord says this. They will eat and have some left over. He served them. They ate and had some over, as the Lord has said. The word of the Lord. You open wide your hand, O Lord, and grant our desires. All your creatures shall thank you, O Lord, and your friends shall repeat their blessing. They shall speak of the glory of your reign and declare your might, O God. The eyes of all creatures look to you, and you give them their food in due time. You open wide your hand, grant the desires of all who live. The Lord is just in all his ways, and loving in all his deeds. He is close to all who call him who call on him from their hearts. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. I, the prisoner in the Lord, implore you to lead a life worthy of your vocation Bear with one another charitably, in complete selflessness, gentleness, and patience. Do all you can to preserve the unity of the Spirit by the peace that binds you together. There is one body, one Spirit, just as you were all called into one and the same hope when you were called. There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, and one God, who is Father of all, through all and within all. The word of the Lord. Please stand to greet the gospel.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus went off to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, or of Tiberias, and a large crowd followed him, impressed by the signs he gave by curing the sick. Jesus climbed the hillside and sat down there with his disciples. It was shortly before the Jewish feast of Passover. Looking up, Jesus saw the crowds approaching and said to Philip, Where can we buy some bread for these people to eat? He only said this to test Philip. He himself knew exactly what he was going to do. Philip answered, 200 denarii would only buy enough to give them a small piece each. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother said, There is a small boy here with five barley loaves and two fish. But what is that between so many? Jesus said to them, Make the people sit down. There was plenty of grass there, and as many as 5,000 men sat down. Then Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks, and gave them out to all who were certain ready. He then did the same with the fish, giving out as much as was wanted. When they had eaten enough, he said to the disciples, Pick up the pieces left over, so that nothing gets wasted. So they picked them up and filled twelve hampers with scraps left over, from the meal of five barley loaves. The people, seeing the sign that he had given, said, This is really the prophet who is to come into the world. Jesus, who could see they were about to come and take him by force and make him king, escaped back to the hills by himself. Beloved in Christ, the gospel of the Lord. Fifty, yeah, I'm there. It says here, please do not touch, but I can't resist it. (laughs) Fifty years ago, if I get this right, in eight days, in Wales, a Bishop of Brentwood travelled to Wales, all the way from Brentwood. Now, I've done it myself once or twice. It's a long, long journey to Wales. You have to have your passport. They don't even speak English. But that Bishop of Brentwood brought back with him a fine priest. Fifty years ago in eight days. Father Bob. And he's been with us ever since. But one or two things about Bob... Bob's a bit unpredictable. Bob's a bit of a surprise. But then again, so is Almighty God. So in today's gospel, we had hungry, thirsty, tired people who were just a bit fed up. And yes, they were listening to Jesus, and that's the best thing in the world to do. But if you're hungry and tired and thirsty, it's a problem. But Jesus took five loaves and two fish and didn't just surprise them, he fed them and gave them what they needed. 
It was the best day of their lives because God surprises us and looks after us. Now, I'm going to tell you two things about Father Bob. First of all, he does surprise you quite a lot. He surprises me, if I'm honest. And uh, it's fun. It's fun. You know, you turn up, you do things, you get organized. And it's a bit different from what you plan sometimes. I said to him, I said, I said, Bob, I do call him Bob, by the way. I don't call him Canon Bob. Well, I do when it's official. But I said, Bob, I said, how many priests are coming today? He said, oh, there's a couple coming. <laughs> now, I'm going to let Bob off the hook here. Priests are hopelessly unreliable when it comes to telling you in advance what they're going to do. You might say as parishioners, yeah, we knew that, Bishop. So what's new? But they really are. It's the way things are. Anyway, a couple of priests, Bob, and a few extra have come to see you today on a Sunday. On a Sunday. Now, that's really hard on a Sunday. I was up at Chelmsford this Sunday. The priests have been elsewhere on this Sunday. Some of the priests have got masses to go to. But that's just an index, a testimony to the fact that Father Bob, Canon Bob, Bob is amazing. He really is a priest's priest. And there's something about Bob that's wonderful, that's great. Because he gathers the people of God together in a surprising, amazing way. Now, am I just saying that Bob is great at holding parties and having meals? Well, yes, I am, actually, because he's, he's good at both of those. So in Lourdes, I was with him last week in Lourdes, and I went to his hotel, and um, I sat down by the side of him. Didn't see him initially, by the way, because he was texting. Now, when you text and you're under 12, you can do that, can't you? But Bob and me, a bit difficult. So he was texting. So I sat next to him for half an hour in the bar, and I thought, when will he notice me? And he did, which was good because he then offered me a drink. And he said, have a drink. I said, yeah, I will. Okay, fine, thank you. And this drink came and I said, do you remember, Bob? I said, I hope we've got time. And apparently he was a bit puzzled because he thought I'd just come for a meal with him and that was fine. But actually, there was a surprise for Bob. Some of you know because some of you were there. And we went to Bartra's the place where Bernadette was a shepherdess and we had a surprise meal and you didn't see it coming, did you, Bob? No, you didn't see it coming. Well, let me tell you now immediately, Bob, there's one or two other things today you won't see coming either. I'm not going to tell you what they are, but just uh, you be careful later on. But the nice thing about surprises is human beings can love them, can laugh at them, we love surprises, birthdays, Christmases, you name it, celebrations, 50th Golden Jubilees, marvellous. There's one more thing I need to say, and it's really important this. When Jesus Christ is around, when Jesus Christ was there feeding the 5,000, he didn't just surprise them or make them happy or fill them or give them to drink and make them relax because they were tidy, he woke them up. All of that's true. But whenever Jesus Christ is around, their lives are transformed. Their lives are transformed from what they were, a struggle, problems, whatever, to something much, much better. And that's precisely, precisely what priesthood is about. Because Father Bob, in his 50 years and 8 days, has brought Christ to others in the most remarkable way. When a priest says the words of Christ... When a priest repeats the actions of Christ, when a priest administers the sacraments, it is Christ who is doing that. In other words, wonderful, surprising, fun, great. Bob is a great human being, but really important, he's a great priest of God. And that's the thing. So what I could do now, I could say, well, you know, think of all the people you've baptised, You've given First Communions to, you've confirmed when the bishop lectures you once a year on Pentecost when he's having a cup of tea. Uh, and that kind of thing. And oh, that's all true, absolutely true. But for a priest, and this is really the amazing thing, we have no idea of the effects we have. Probably, my guess is, fathers, Bob and the other fathers, we know about 0.001% of the good we do. You know, we think about things, we think about people, we think, yeah, that was lovely. 
That's great. But the view from heaven is very different. And the view from heaven is the only view that matters. So the view from heaven, when Christ fed the 5,000, was yes, they got fed and they were hungry and they were thirsty, all the rest. I said all of that. But actually, their lives were transformed. They believed in Jesus. They believed in God. And they talked about that belief to others. From the 5,000 came 50,000. From the 50,000 came many, many more. And so it is with the priesthood of Father Bob Hamill. There will be a day, hopefully, Bob, not for quite a while yet, when he'll get to heaven. Yeah? And I can tell you now one or two things about heaven. Okay? It's true. It's true. St. Peter's there with a big bunch of keys. We know that. And uh, there's a big, big main gate. For a good priest, like Father Bob, there's a special gate. Now you might say, oh, can you tell that from the bishop's gate? Well, no, because we're around the back. And I think there's a turnstile, and you've got to put a ticket in. It gets very complicated for bishops, but we'll do our best. But when he gets to heaven, he'll have some idea, some idea of what he's done in 15, to years and eight days and many, many, many more. We hope so. And for that, we give thanks to Almighty God. So those are my words today, my very few words, hopefully. We'll have one surprise along the way. We've got the Mass here. We've got something at the end of Mass. We're going to go next door. But above all in this, Father Bob would ask you one thing. As you give thanks to God for his ministry, pray for the next years and days whatever they may be, that what is to come is even greater than what has happened so far. Congratulations, Father Bob. Don't worry, I'm not going to (laughs) preach. I just want to do what I should have done at the beginning of the Mass, to welcome Bishop Allen and to to welcome all my brother priests. And one or two of them you'll know because there were students here with us. And uh, to welcome, and I can't just believe how many are here, and it's just so wonderful they are. So I say a huge thank you to you all. My heart. We now stand for the faith, prayer of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not me, consubstantial with the Father, and through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, He suffered death and was buried, and arose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the Deliverer, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Eternal High Priest, we come to you with gratitude in our hearts for your care and blessings. And we offer ourselves to you that you will draw us closer to yourself. Listen graciously to us now as we bring ourselves, our hopes, 
our dreams. We remember Pope Francis, Bishop Allen, and all religious leaders. May they dedicate themselves to the cause of peace and set an example of dialogue and understanding. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for Canon Bob as he celebrates his 50 years in the priesthood, that he will continue serving Almighty God and his people for many more years. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. We pray for the gift of vocations to the priesthood in our Diocese of Brentwood and the world over that good men may be drawn to love and serve the people of God as priests. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayers. For retired priests, that they may experience God's abundant love, and for all priests who struggle with loneliness, declining health, or loss of mobility, that they may be comforted by the grace of the Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, for all whom Canon Bob has served throughout his priestly life, that we may affirm, support, and celebrate his gift of service to us. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayers. That this parish family may continue to embrace our priests and sustain their ministry by our love, our constant prayer, and our trust in their leadership. Lord, in your mercy, receive our For priests who now sleep in peace and in hope of the resurrection, that God may lead them gently into their eternal reward. Lord, in your mercy, receive our We ask Our Lady of Ludes to accompany Canon Bob and all of us in our prayers as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And now in silence, let us pray for our special intentions and needs. Loving God, I thank you for your countless blessings throughout my priestly ministry, and I pray for all who have journeyed and supported me. May you continue to draw us closer to yourself and grant us all we ask of you through Christ our Lord. Amen.
bless thee, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit to the earth, work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Bless thee, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit to the vine, work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Bless thee, Lord, With humble spirit and contrite hearts, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Pray, my friends, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of the Lord's Church. We offer you the sacrifice of praise, O Lord, for the deepening of our service of you, so that what you have conferred on us, unworthy as we are, we may graciously bring to fulfillment through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right. it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father of mercies and faithful God. For you have given us Jesus Christ, your Son, as our Lord and Redeemer. 
He always showed compassion for children and for the poor, for the sick and for sinners, and he became a neighbor to the oppressed and the afflicted. By word and deed he announced to the world that you are our Father and that you care for all your sons and daughters. And so with all the angels and saints we exalt and bless your name and sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and given you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, 
his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognize the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, St. Michael and all the saints, and his constant intercession in your presence, who rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, Advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Alan, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever. command and formed by divine teaching we pray our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Don't be say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen.
Let us pray. For the glory of your name, O Lord, I have joyfully celebrated the mystery of faith to mark the anniversary of my priestly ordination so that I may be in truth what I have handled mystically in this sacrifice through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's sit down. Father Bob, sit down, please. (laughs) This is the first of the surprises that Father Bob does not know about. Usually, on a Sunday afternoon at this time, there's either the Latin Rite Kerala Mass or the uh, Sula Malabar um, Mass. The communities, many of them are here today. And Father Winston, who is the chaplain to the uh, Kerala Latin Rite, is now going to present... Father Bob, with the ponada, excuse my Malayalam, which is a sign of honor and celebration for a very special priest. And now I'm going to ask the priests and seminarians only to stand, and we're going to sing the little hymn in Latin, Ad Multus Annus, which means, may you have many, many more years of life and ministry. And there will now be two presentations, one by Bishop Allen and one uh, on behalf of the parish. I've been asked uh, to present this to you, Canon Bob, and uh, the parish are going to follow it up in a little minute, so hold on. One thing I never do is come to anything without my specs. <laughs> True. Golden Jubilee, Canon Bob Hamill, celebrating 50 years in the priesthood, ordained Cardiff, Wales, 20th of July 1974. Well done, good and faithful servant from St. Michael's Parish. Father Bob, Canon Bob, or Bob, as we all call you, I heard at the beginning of Mass um, a little line, and it says, be as generous as possible. I think that actually is Father Bob. Um, I interviewed you, I don't know whether you remember, back in 2016, um, and I had to, one of my tasks for a, um, some studying that I was doing was to interview the parish priest and ask a number of questions. And... One particular question, 
uh, you gave a, a very simple answer as to really what you were all about. And I think actually it sums you up a treat. And you simply said to us, I'm here to serve, that's me. And I think that is, I'm sure you will all agree, is our Bob, our Canon Bob, our Father Bob. And we love him very much for that. I'm sure we've all got our own individual stories that we can tell. I certainly have. I'm sure we can save those for later on today, otherwise we'll be in the heat even longer. We hope you like your, your gift that we've given you there. Um, in the best traditions, we always collect for you. Um, and we've been doing that over the last couple of weeks. So there's a fairly hefty gift in there for you as well. And also uh, a generous donation from everybody that's attended today as well. So on behalf of the parish here and the parishes that you've served previously across the diocese, the Catholic Fellowship and everybody, very many congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. It's just a brief announcement to say that when we finish um, Holy Mass, there are refreshments in the school hall straight afterwards. So you're all invited. Thanks very much. So and then finally, we hear the golden jubilarian himself as he addresses us. Shall we welcome Canon Bob Hamill as he addresses us? I'm in shock. <laughs> I'm trying to recover from a most wonderful trip to Lourdes, and you haven't given me a chance. It was such a special week, and some of our group are here, and I thank them very much for coming. And the others who were not in my actual group but were in Lourdes too are here and I thank you all very, very much. I can't believe there's so many here but a huge thank you to everyone for your kindness, your generosity and most importantly your support and prayers. As Bishop Allen has told you I was ordained a priest in Cardiff on the 20th of July, two th one nine yeah, I can't even remember the year, 1974. <laughs> Bishop Casey came to me when I was in my fourth year studying. And he said to me, Bob, where are you, do you want to be ordained? And I gave him one name, and that was Cardiff. I also said, or nowhere. <laughs> and he said to me, it'd be a tremendous privilege to come. And he came. And it was a you know, tremendous privilege for me and for the parish. And we had a great occasion there. But the last 50 years here in Brentwood, I was so pleased I chose Brentwood. Because in, I was studying in a college called Osterley and uh, we were coming to the end of the two years there and I hadn't known yet which diocese to go to. And the students kept at me. So I said to them, get me a map of England. So they got this map and I said, where my finger goes, I'll go there. And it went in the River Thames between Southwark and Brentwood. And I said, there's only one place I'm going, Brentwood. And it's the greatest decision I've ever made. And I do thank the bishops, the priests, and of course the people for all the guidance and su support that I have received very, very much. Reminding me always, always, as John has just said, I'm here to serve. I really believe in that and that we do all we can to help each other in every way. 
So a huge thank you to you all. I hope to be around for at least another 50 years for you. <laughs> it's only good people who go to heaven when they're young. So I've got to carry on and hope that it take me another 50 years to be good. So thank you all very, very much. And please do come round to the school. It's, you, you won't be eating in the school hall. You'll just get your food and come out into the ground. I haven't the foggiest what they have done. I was barred. So I have to get permission from them now if I can go along with you all. <laughs> The bishops give me permission, that's good enough. <laughs> so thank you all very much, and every blessing on you all. So we stand now, please, for the blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. We bow our heads for God's blessing. May Almighty God bless you in his kindness and pour out his saving wisdom upon you. Amen. May he nourish you always with the teaching of the faith and make you persevere in holy deeds. Amen. Amen. May he turn your steps towards himself and show you the path of charity and peace. And may Almighty God bless us all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, come Amen. down on us and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. In peace, we go and continue showing our love for Jesus. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. We're, going to have, we're going to have two hymns as an ending. The one hymn is one some of you have heard from me. Guide me, O thou great Redeemer. And afterwards then we'll sing the Lord's hymn. And the, we, the, we will all leave when the Guide me, O thou great Redeemer is finished. Destruction 
Lend me safe on Canaan side Songs of praises Songs of praises I will ever give to thee I will ever give to thee So as we take the recessional hymn Canon Bob, the bishop, and all the priests will stand in front to take a group photograph. Thank you very much. We take that recession on him. Sir.